see all the mothers here this morning. All of you.
Well, good morning, and happy Mother's Day. We got a lot of moms in the church. I get to join you this year. I feel like I'm in an exclusive club that I've been out of so long, and here I am. I'm glad to be a part of it. We're so glad that you're all here today. We're glad you're here every Sunday, but today also we are glad to see your faces. We're going to have a continued wonderful time today. My main reminder that I've been instructed to give is that we do not have fireside tonight. So if you are coming tonight, don't. You're going to be by yourself. So spend time with your moms, with your family, with all those good people, and enjoy the day. And we'll look forward to getting back to it again next Sunday. And so, I believe that I have to stay put, but joining me on the stage this morning is Gloria Crenshaw. Thank you. Lunch is going to start us out this morning. Uh, and I think it's very appropriate for Lexi today, and that's why I picked her to do it, and she told me something that happened. I asked her if I could give her a gift this morning. She said no, but she told me something we did give. So I thought, well, that kind of goes along with this. <laughs> so we're gonna start out with Lexi reading, then immediately after we're going to have a song that Sean's going to play. Thank okay. you. It's called Before I Was a Mom. You can tell why I was picked for this. <laughs> I'm the rookie of the group, I would say. So this is for me today and for all of you. Before I was a mom, I never tripped over toys and forgot words to a lullaby. I didn't worry or not my plants were poisonous. I never thought about immunizations. Before I was a mom, I had never been puked on, pooped on, chewed on, peed on. I feel all of that this morning. I had complete control over my mind and my thoughts. I slept all night. Before I was a mom, I never held down a screaming child so doctors could do tests or give shots. I never looked into teary eyes and cried. I never got gloriously happy over a simple grin. I never sat up late hours at night watching a baby sleep. Before I was a mom, I never held a sleeping baby just because I didn't want to put him, her, down. I never felt my heart break into a million pieces when I couldn't stop the hurt. I never knew something so small could affect my life so much. I never knew I could love someone so much. I never knew I would love being a mom. Before I was a mom, I never knew the feeling of having my heart outside my body. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching over me. All of the sleepless nights you lay awake Thank you for knowing when to hold me close When to let me go Thank you for every stepping stone And for the path that always leads me home Thank you for the time you took to see the heart inside of me You gave me the rules to start this life And then you gave me wings to fly And I learned to dream Because you believed in me There's no power treasure equal to its worth the gift of a mother's love thank you for every sunlit day that fills the corners of my memory thank you for every Selfless, unsung deed I know you did for me Thank you for giving me the choice To search my soul Till I could find my voice And I thank you for teaching me To be strong enough to bear Okay. 
nothing like a mother's love. Uh, they do so much. We, mothers, we do so much. Dads are important, but moms do so much. And uh, I really struggle with this message, and I have no idea why, because Mother's Day, you think, oh, it's just a regular Mother's Day message, but it's really not. Uh, there's no such thing as a perfect mother. That's what my, my main thought is. That there's no perfect mother. I'm sorry if I've ruined any of your thoughts that, oh, I am the perfect mom. No, we're not perfect. Uh, how many of you sitting here that are moms know that you're not perfect? I was going to be concerned if I was the only one to have my hand up. Uh, newsflash, there's no perfect mom. And there's no way to be a perfect mom, but there's a million ways to be a good mom. Good moms are very important. I, you know what? We have people, we do have perfect moms, but they've never had children yet. And once you have children, your life changes. Lexi, I thought that was very appropriate for you this morning. And I knew it was an emotional, be emotional, but... There are so many things involved in being a mother, and the love we have for our children never goes away. It doesn't matter how old they get, you're still going to love them. And are they going to do wrong? Yeah, they're kids. They're children. They're going to do it. So when I have my firstborn, Krista, and I put her in my arms, I had was clueless as to what to expect. Uh, and let's just face it, babies don't come with a manual. Uh, when they lay, you in your, lay them in your arms, <laughs> then it's up to you. And let's just face it, if there were manuals, they wouldn't be right anyway, because how many manuals have we read and the directions are never quite right? right? You have a piece left over, this and that. So it wouldn't matter if they had come with a manual and said, here, you need to read this, it still wouldn't work. And it's pretty awesome, though, to think that God entrusted us with those little tiny precious bundles. And he thought, okay, this is the perfect mom for this child. Not me, not perfect, but this is the mom that can handle this. How many of you know there are so many children who are brought into the world and some moms are just not prepared? God has the right mom for each child. How that mom reacts is up to them. Uh, I'm a very emotional mom. Uh, I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I love my great-grandchild. One of these days I'll have more than one. Uh, not for a while, but I will. And, but I love them. And are they perfect? No. But that's why I love them. Uh, I was amazed because this morning in Sunday school class, we just talked randomly uh, about some things. And we're, without uh, even Aurora even knowing what my message was, she said, you know what? At school, we ha I have these three friends, and they think they are perfect. Uh, and I said to her, you know, that's amazing, Aurora, because my message today is there's no perfect person. Our children, whether you want to believe it or not, they're not perfect. How many of you have perfect children here? I didn't think so. But that's okay. You love them with their imperfections. Okay. Um, so everything a mom is and all that a mom does is for her child. 
And I know, Dad, your day's coming. And I know you do a lot, but a mom is really the main person for training the children. Um, everything she does is for her children, and we as moms leave a little piece of ourselves with each growth of our child. As they grow, they're going to remember. I'm completely off my notes, but that's okay. As they grow, they're going to remember certain things that you did. They're going to remember how you handled situations. Be careful how you handle situations. Uh, we don't want them to make feel like they're never loved, and they make a mistake, it's okay. It's probably not going to be the last mistake they ever make, but you don't just keep on them and keep on them and keep on them. You say, okay, we'll do better next time. Uh, I love it with my children, even though I don't have a lot, because they can come up with the greatest question this morning. And Ryder never ceases to amaze me either. But I've heard several adults ask this question. Where was God born? I said, the Bible said God just always was. I said, but you know, when we get to heaven, we can ask him. <laughs> God, where did you come from? So kids think, and they do a lot, let's, let's encourage them in them thoughts. And I, I just told him, I don't know. Um, if I had, I read this article. Oh, you know, before that, Sean, let's go ahead and do my next little thing by Joyce Meyer. You will like this. I mean, honestly and truly, wow. Adam didn't know what he was getting when he got Eve. <laughs> well, maybe he did. You know, he was a man, and he didn't know what else to call her, so he just looked at her and said, whoa, man. <laughs> and that's how we got woman. Mom and Dad were watching TV. By the way, this is from out of my book, The Confident Woman, which you can get. And if you're a guy, you can just put tape over the woe. <laughs> Same message will work for you. Anyway, Mom and Dad were watching TV when Mom said, I'm tired and it's getting late and I think I'll go to bed. She got up, went to the kitchen to make sandwiches for the next day's lunches, rinsed out the dessert bowls, took meat out of the freezer for supper, the follow for supper the following evening, checked the cereal box levers, filled the sugar container, put spoons in the bowls, put bowls on the table, started the coffee pot for brewing the next morning, put some wet clothes in the dryer, put a load of clothes in the washer, ironed a shirt, sewed on several loose buttons, picked up the game pieces left on the table, put the telephone book back in the drawer. She watered the plants, emptied a wastebasket, hung up a towel to dry, she yawned and stretched and headed for the bedroom. She stopped by the desk, wrote a note to the teacher, counted out some cash for a school outing, pulled out a textbook from under the chair, signed a birthday card for a friend, addressed and stamped the envelope, wrote a quick list for the supermarket the next day. She went and put both of those in her purse. Mom then creamed her face, put on moisturizer, brushed and flossed her teeth, trimmed her nails. Hubby called, I thought you were going to bed. I'm on my way, she said. She... <laughs> She put some water into the dog's bowl, put the cat outside, made sure the doors were locked, took, looked in on each one of the children, turned on a bedside lamp, hung up a shirt, threw some dirty socks in the laundry basket, had a brief conversation with the one child still doing homework. In her own room, she set the alarm, laid out clothing for the next day, straightened up the shoe rack, added three things to her to-do to -do list for the next day. About that time, the husband turned off the TV and announced, to no one in particular, I'm going to bed, and he did. <laughs> Let me tell you something, women, you rock. I am telling you what, the details that women take care of and keep up with to run a house, you men, you have no idea what God has given you. You just don't have the slightest idea. I'm going to bed. And he got up and he did. 
And that's true. Women take care of all that stuff. All those little tiny details that nobody even pays any attention to. So let me tell you, you never ever have to wonder if you're a good mother. You never have to wonder if you're a good wife. You need to start celebrating all the things that you do because you are amazing. I mean, absolutely amazing. Come on, let's give the, the mothers in here a big hand. Whoa! Woo! Hallelujah! Our God is an awesome God. Amen? Oh, you can't beat Joyce Meyer. Uh, I love that. I thought, wow. Only she could do that and do it in the way that she did it. And mothers, we do walk. Uh, we do do a lot of details that others never see, our husbands never see. Uh, and they'll say, Richard, phenomenal for this. What are you doing? What are you doing this for? Well, because I want to. I enjoy what I do. How many of you enjoy motherhood? It, it, it's okay. Uh, I was going to read this next little thing, and that's why I wanted Sean to do that. Here is, if you were going to have some kind of an ad, here is a description for mom. One, woman for long-term position. Degree or diploma, diploma, not necessary. Knowledge of the following would be helpful. Cooking, baking, especially cookies, washing, Doctoring cuts, scrapes, and measles when they come along. Bloody noses, broken hearts, sewing buttons, costumes, and party dresses. Able to referee fights, uh, play ball, drive a car, no long division. Nowadays, I think it's common core. You need to know all that quite a bit. Was I'm totally out on that. Uh, how to give birthday parties. Blow balloons, must be able to tolerate dirty little boys, giggly little girls, pets, tracked up floors, should be a financial wizard, able to maintain a household on pennies, quarters, but still save for college. She is able to patch broken dolls or toys, be Santa's helper, make colored eggs, uh, attend little league games, dance in tumbling recitals, uh, work in session stands, tell bedtime stories, should be a shoulder to cry on, uh, and must be a available 24 hours, uh, no overtime pay, uh, may be short or tall, thin or plump, uh, must have a heart of gold, must be able to forgive over and over and over and over and love forever. Any of those sound familiar? Those are things moms do. Uh, I know sewing's not a favorite with my family, but they'll do it. I know we've attended many recitals, <laughs> tumblings, uh, things like that. We've enjoyed them all. Well, I have. <laughs> men, men go because they have to go. Uh, <laughs> we enjoy them. Uh, to watch the chi each child and each year, the difference, the maturity that comes with that part of it. Mothers do all these little things, washing. My kids don't like to iron, I do. Uh, you know, give me something that needs to be ironed, I like the way it looks after you're done. I think Sean likes to iron. <laughs> he's, he's one of the rare ones. So as mothers, we all have things that we do to keep our home in order. I'm a neat freak. I'll tell you right now, I like things to be in their proper place at my house. I don't know about any other wives or mothers, but I have a problem when you get something out, man, and you don't put it back. And then you say, well, where's it at? And I'll say, I told you. So this, I think it was just yesterday. I told Richard, oh, his thing right now is gardening and seeds. And he had this bag of seeds. I said, I'm going to take these, put them in a garage in our little cover. I said, did you hear what I said? Repeat what I said. I said, I'm just having you do that because if you go to look for it later, you're going to say, but you never told me. So women, we are, 
had an important factor in the home, not just for our children, but also for our husband, because sometimes they can be babies. Uh, I've seen this quote more than once. Uh, it's easier to take care of a sick child than a sick husband because they act like they're dying when they have something wrong with them. So, um, there are no mothers are alive. What works for one mother will probably not work for another. You have to know your limitations as a mom. You know what works and what doesn't. And don't let any woman tell you, but this is how it should be done, because you say, no, this is the way I'm doing it, and it works for me. So people can't tell you how to be a mother. And generally, it's the ones that try to tell you how to be a mother that really aren't a very good mother to begin with. But they want you to think that they are. So mothers... We need to make sure that we know what we're doing. You know what? You don't have to say a word. You just do it. Your kid, you don't have to tell your kids, I'm doing this because I love you. No. They see what you're doing. And as they grow up, they're going to remember that. And when they get married, which we have some marriages coming along in our family, marriage back here, and when they get married, they're going to remember the things that you've done, and they may choose to do things the way you do because it's simpler. They can try a new way, but sometimes that doesn't work for mothers. They watch everything we do. They know exactly how we're going to handle things. And I don't want, I didn't want any of my children to be afraid to come to me and say, hmm, uh, this happened. And then have a fear of what I might do. Things happen. And I may not be happy, but things happen. And you just go on with life. And here's another tidbit. It's okay not to always enjoy motherhood. When they're doing the little things that Lexi was talking about, or things that's worried about seeing and the pooping and all that stuff, you still, it's okay. Sometimes mothers get tired. Do any of you mothers in here ever get tired? It's like you can't get one leg to go in front of the other before you go to bed, like Joyce Myers was saying. And it's okay. And mothers, I don't know about you, but I cry a lot. How many mothers have ever just cried because you just don't know what to do? You don't want to see your children hurting. You don't want to see people hurt them because here's what I tell people. I told my kids this this morning. <laughs> have you ever noticed that animal moms are really pretty good moms? They will treat their little babies very well. And if somebody comes after them, a predator, What's that animal do? I think it was right. It said they're going to attack them. Okay, guess what, moms? All of us as mothers know, you touch one of my children, you better be ready for the consequences because the imperfectness of this mother is going to come out. Uh, I, how many of you agree with me? Your children are your life, so don't, don't think you're going to hurt my child and get back by with it because it's just not going to work. And I know we have dads that... You, you might not even have a life after that if you hurt one of their children. So, it can be exhausting. Motherhood's exhausting. Nobody said it was going to be perfect. And you need to consider all these things if you haven't had children yet because they can be exhausting. And, and when Lexi was talking about, and I've even talked to court, they make sure, how many of you as mothers ever made sure your child was breathing? And they tell you to put your finger in their nose. That doesn't always work. I always like to see if their little chest is coming up and down. How many mothers have done that? It's just motherhood. That's concern. You want your child to be all right. And it can be the most heartbreaking thing when your child comes home. Break up with the boyfriend. Worst thing ever. Mothers break with you. They don't want to see you hurt him. Uh, a mother never wants to see her child cry. I don't care how little. When I see Asha with a tear in his eye, it makes me tear up because I don't like seeing those tears. And you know he really wants something when he has a tear in his eye. So there are moments when you, you just break down. That's okay. You don't have to break down in front of everybody. You just have a breakdown moment. I've had those. I've had to go to my bathroom before and I just break down my bathroom. Nobody needs to know I'm breaking down. It's just me and God. I say, God, I need your help today. You know what? I may not be, and I was not the perfect mother, but I'll let you know right now I was a praying mother. Me and God had lots of talks when my children were growing up because I didn't know what to do. 
And sometimes you just have to get along with God and say, okay, God, I need your help today. I don't know what else to do. He'll give you a peace. You just have to sit still. He'll give you a peace. He'll give you a calm. You are still a good mom even if you break down. It happens. You're, you're still a good mom. And on this Mother's Day, mothers who think they have to be perfect, you need to quit putting yourself on a guilt trip. I know I'm talking the live stream too. Mothers out there, it's okay. You're not a perfect mom. It's okay. You're going to have those moments. Uh, remind yourself, I'm not a perfect mom, but I am a great mom. How many of you think you're a great mom? You are a great mom. And uh, I am enough mom. I am an enough mom for my children. God gave you your children. You are an enough mom. And so is every mom sitting here. You are enough mom. You give them enough love. You give them enough care. You give them enough of the senses they need. You give them enough of the things they see from you growing up. And when you give them advice, they may not act like they take it, but they're going to think about that advice later on when things are going rough in their life, and they're going to say, Mom was right. That's a hard thing for people to say, but Mom's all right. So, as long as you're caring for them, you're a good mom. As long as you're loving them where they're at. I am completely off my notes this way. You're loving them where they're at in their life. They have rough patches too. And as they get older, they have even more rough patches in their life. But you're there for them no matter what. They just need to know, I support you. I've got your back. We're going to make it through this situation. Uh, let's get rid of this thinking, I have to do everything perfectly as a mom. No, you don't. Contrary to popular belief, there are absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not a perfect mom watching live stream or sitting here this morning. I'm sorry, we're not perfect. Um, so we need to enjoy the journey of parenthood. We need to enjoy the journey of being a mom. And as Sean, Sean in my last sentence there, uh, they grow up so fast. Wasn't it just yesterday I felt your skin on mine Held you in my arms Fell in love a billion times From crawl to walk First breath to talk To letting go of that bike With the training wheels off Oh, watch that clock Those hands, they never stop Give me a replay, give me a rewind There's a way to slow down time Someone show me how you Make it right now How do you hold on to the moment That are here and gone Man, before you know it It's all in the past Slipping through the cracks You're never gonna get away Gone. 
my message, but I want to say to my children, Crystal, Holly, and Sean, to my granddaughters, Lexi, Cameron, and Peyton, and to my great-grandson, Asher, you are my heart and soul. You'll always be my babies, no matter how old you are. And remember, I'll love you forever. I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. I love all of you today. Mothers, you are the best. Joyce Myers Wright, we need to give ourselves an applause just for the because we are here. Uh, I, I believe that's the end of my message. I'm going to make an announcement here in a minute. Um, back in the back, and like I said, I don't know if you were supposed to do this, but I'll do it. Um, we have a Waste basket with hot, hot waste in it. It has flowers. Um, and the waste basket has water. Mothers, you ought to pick out new flowers to make you a bouquet to take home with you. Uh, you don't have anything fancy, but I put some grocery bags back there for you to put your flowers in so that the water won't drip on your clothes. I do think of those things. So on your way out, mothers, I love each one of you. This has been a great day. Uh, and God's going to bless it. Let's just say a quick little prayer here. Heavenly Father, I'm so thankful for every mother here this morning. I pray that you're just going to bless their day. It's going to be filled with precious memories. It's going to be moments that they will never be able to catch again. That we'll enjoy every minute of it, God, that we will just love as you love us. And I thank you now for what you're doing in our lives. And just teach Touch each one of us today and bless us in your name. Amen. You are dismissed.